The population is all 742 pennies in the jar. The sample is the 20 pennies that were randomly selected. The parameter is the true mean date of all 742 pennies in the jar. The statistic is the mean date of the pennies in the sample, and its value is x bar, which is 1996.6. For part b, let's start by drawing arrows at 1996.6 and 2004.05. The mean is the balancing point of the distribution, so if you picture these as physical shapes, where would they actually balance? Looking at the first sample, there's no way it would balance right here. There's not enough weight on this side, so this seems to be the balancing point. So this must be the mean right here. So the mean of this sample is the greater value, 2004.05. Let's just check that the mean makes sense to be 1996.6 in this sample. If this was a physical shape, that does appear to be about the balancing point. So that must be the mean on this one. Another thing to note is on skew data, the mean always chases the tail of the skew. So this is skewed left, so the mean is going to be to the left of the median value. Anytime you're describing a population, you need to talk about the shape, center, spread, and outliers. The acronym SOCS, S-O-C-S, might help. So here's what we said. The distribution of all penny dates is skewed left with a center at the year 2004, which is the median. We can see this by the long tail on the left side of the box plot. All the dates are between 1959 and 2017, and the IQR is 19 years. We can get IQR by subtracting quartile 3, which was 2012, from quartile 1, 1993. There are several lower outliers, and we know one of them is 1959, because that's the minimum. When talking about the shape, the skew makes sense, because as time goes by, older pennies get lost or damaged, while newer pennies are added to circulation. For more help on outliers and modified box plots, check out this video. It explains how to make a modified box plot, and I think really helps you understand how they can be helpful.